is just past 10 o'clock here. We're at Freedom Plaza, where the march for Trump is still a couple hours away, though, by the size of the crowd. You could be forgiven if you thought it was starting pretty soon here. The, just as we came on live here, the crowd's getting pretty loud. This is a big turn from where it was just a few hours earlier. We got out here early this morning. This plaza, Freedom Plaza, was empty. Now, it's hard to put an estimate on it, but it sure sounds like at least a thousand demonstrators out here. Something's down below us on the street here. We can't quite see it. But the crowd's pretty fired up about it. A couple of people are running on the street. Let's see what comes out here, if we can see it. I think it's some kind of caravan down there. It's a little tough to see. But that's the, the second sort of use of this street down here by Freedom Plaza. The first were a couple really big Trump 2020 flags that came out. And now, here we go. Dave, can we see this at all? Okay. And the crowd's still moving down this way, following this caravan. And this crowd has gotten bigger and bigger over the past few hours. It's still growing, and there's still about two hours before the event itself is scheduled to start, before this march is scheduled to it looks, start. It looks almost like I'm seeing two black cruisers that might be maybe. Yeah, it looks like a Secret Service car, so it might be. Yeah, take a look. You can see them now coming around the corner. It does look like some kind of law enforcement. Maybe Secret Service here. I don't want to speculate. The president did tweet that he might be showing up here today. Obviously, that's, that's not confirmed by any means, but it does look like we're seeing some kind of pretty heavy law enforcement presence. Looks like Secret Service. Let's pay close attention here. Let's see who gets out of these vehicles. Crowd obviously very excited, right up against the road here. Getting really close to the to what looks like a motorcade. Oh, take a look at this. Easily over a dozen law enforcement vehicles out here. A lot of these blacked out SUVs with lights on. It sure looks like a like it looks I like think a, it, is him it looks like a motorcade. Do you see him, Dave? Yeah, it looks like I'm waving right in the second car in. That's Dave Scarnato. He's behind the lens, behind the camera here. He's got a closer look, looking through the viewfinder. He's seeing what you yeah, all are is, seeing. That is him. There it is. That's it President like Trump. It does look like him. Dave, you're saying that's the President of the United yeah, States it's there? Looking, it's looking like that. Everybody's following that car. Right. It's looking like President Trump. Looks like he is here at Freedom Plaza as we speak right now. This is going to be a very historic day at our nation's capital as, you know, this is really the first gathering that we've had, Zoe, uh, since the election. And since, uh, and we just saw President Trump yesterday in the Rose Garden. So this is the first time the people have shown up. Yes, you're right. And um, I just, everybody, they seem to be very enthusiastic about this election. And again, it's not over, even though the media, I've been watching on the left and seeing how they are determined to stick with the lie that, Joe Biden is the president, but we know that this is not over yet until the law says it is over. Absolutely. And of course, we've got uh, several crews out and about. We've got them at the Supreme Court, which has got to be a pretty cool backdrop for that. Absolutely. Uh, that will be the, de the destination of today's march. Starting here in Freedom Plaza, we'll have a series of speakers that we'll be bringing to you here. And then we're going to have a march down to the Capitol, towards the Capitol, to the Supreme Court. And then there'll be another slate of speakers at that location later today. Right about here. Thank you. Thank you. So right here is where the stage is being set up. In this direction, the first people will be speaking probably about noon today. And then after that speaking engagement is done, we will be having uh, the march, the march for Stop the Steal, in which we'll be going down this direction, down Pennsylvania Avenue towards the Capitol. And you can see the Capitol Dome there. We'll be walking down this way, making our way to the Supreme Court. And at the Supreme Court, we'll have another slate of speakers that will be there. And you might not be seeing this somewhere else. So, ma'am, what is your name? My name is Linda Dupere from New Hampshire. 
And so did you drive down here? Yes, we did. There were five of us in a car. We stayed outside of D.C. and drove in this morning. Okay. And, and what we just saw our great president go by. Mm -hmm. And my question is, where are you, ABC? Where are you, NBC, CBS? Where is the commie news station that tries to per protect Biden? That's what I want to know. Where are they? They're not here. Look at all these thousands of people that are supporting our president. And you chicken livid news stations should be disgusted with yourself because we are disgusted with you. One of the organizers for this march, uh, the executive director of Women for America First, said that she is putting her faith in the court system. She wants to see the legal challenges that the president's campaign, the president's camp have filed. She wants to see them work their way through the court. Uh, those challenges are, are challenging the results of the election. Some have claimed that some ballots were not counted properly. Some have disputed the results of the election altogether. Um, the president himself and his campaign have filed multiple legal challenges disputing the results of the election in some states. Some of the people we talked to who are out today and some of the organizers of this event say that they're waiting for those court battles and those court issues to be resolved before they accept the results of this election. And that is part of the message that a lot of the marchers here, a lot of the demonstrators here want to get out. They're marching from Freedom Plaza to the Supreme Court. Uh, we heard chants of stop the steal earlier today. A lot of folks here are dubious of the election results. Let's take one last look down here. One last maybe wide pan. Just the time we've been live here, I think the crowd has gotten bigger and bigger. Thank you for tuning in with us at Right Side Broadcasting here on YouTube. We are reporting live from the Freedom Plaza in Washington, D.C. Uh, as you can see, we've got several camera crew. We've got several um, correspondents out here. We have nine of us and four camera, uh, four, four of our camera guys with us. So there's uh, there's quite a few of us around here. So thank you for tuning in with us. My name is Lilith. I am here with Adrian and Mike Nificent, and we're reporting live from the Freedom Plaza. The rally is set to begin at 12 o'clock Eastern time. It is currently 10:43. It is jam packed. The roads are all shut down in D.C. We shut down D.C. left and right, and um, I, it's it's so it, it's so packed out here. There's so much to go over already that I have to like slow my thoughts down. So, Mike, is there anything that you would like to add? <laughs> well, let me just say this, ladies and gentlemen, this is the mother of all rallies. I've been to probably 50 rallies since joining politics and this by far is the biggest most energetic crowd I've ever seen I mean we've got everybody here you've got people from different networks you got di crowd boys you got everybody out here we're all here because we're all united for one reason and this even goes beyond President Trump this is about the United States of America President Trump was robbed we all watched what happened and so right side broadcasting we're out here to bring you what's actually going on you are not going to see this you see these people back here marching behind me you've got people who've driven over from california fifty thousand cars drove over from california you people who drove up from florida you have all kinds of americans out here immigrants black people asian people hispanic people indian people hindus and i'd like to the truth to come out and i'd like to, the election to be fair I see. And what are your concerns whether Trump or Biden win the election? Deeply concerned. I would prefer Trump to, uh, to stay in office. I came from a communist country. I escaped from Vietnam to be here to have my freedom to practice my faith and also to be fully human. And uh, if communists take over our country, where would I go? We are all here because we are committed to bringing you guys the truth. This is what we've been doing since 2015. We are the only network out there that's going to show you the crowd. And I know that there are a ton of people out there watching who are disgruntled 
and they are they're just disgusted by what they've seen from Fox News over the past couple of weeks. Okay, this is your golden opportunity to support a truth-based network that's going to put America first. It's not going to have some spin or some agenda. We're not going to call races early. We, we don't have any agenda other than preserving our free and sovereign nation-state republic. So support Right Side Broadcasting. The best way you can do that is go to rsbnetwork.com slash donate. I came out here to support Trump, first of all. Second of all, to uh, to draw a light on a hoax, on a stolen election. And certainly it's about Trump for me, but it's, it's a bigger picture too. I mean, if we allowed this to happen in this country, you know, why bother having votes ever again? Why have an election ever again? I stayed up late on election night till 3 a.m. Trump was comfortably in the lead. I woke up at 6 a.m. three hours later, and now it's a, it's a, it's a dogfight? I mean, we're in a race here? Come on. We saw the turnout and the effort that Biden put in to the campaign. I mean, we again, we saw the turnouts that he had at his rallies and whatnot. I mean, there's more people here today than than Biden had in all his rallies combined. We saw the rallies this man had. This is not an election. This is a movement. He's, we love Trump. And careful what you wish for, because a wounded bear is a lot more dangerous than... Hey, look, whoa, you wait right there. I'm going to go smoke some weed and then come back. We're the only ones that have the capacity to bring you multiple camera shots, multiple angles, and interview people. We have the best commentary out there, and we're not going to lie to you. We're going to tell you the truth. There's out here today. There's 13 of us out here today from all over the country. Don't get me wrong. I love Tucker Carlson. I like Laura Ingram. I like Sean Hannity. I like Greg oh, Gutfeld. Tucker, I like the. Yeah, I love the personalities. However, that network. Their investors, their donors, the people who dictate their message make them nothing more than controlled opposition. So you need to stop supporting Fox News. Here's what else they did. Their election coverage was absolutely awful. President Trump was up. President Trump was up by 400,000 votes in Florida with 90% of the vote counted. The only remaining counties that needed to be counted were the panhandle, and that's the reddest part of the state. Fox News refused to cover that. Fox News did not want to give President Trump Florida. Then they turned around and they gave him Virginia early, or they gave Biden Virginia early. They called the race in Arizona too early. They didn't want to give President Trump Texas. They didn't want to give him Ohio. Their election coverage was absolutely horrible. They cut away from Kaylee McEnany. Absolutely horrible. They're trying to play gatekeepers. They don't want you to know what's true. That's why they cut away from live press conferences from the president. What else have they done? They canceled Judge Jeanine Pirro. What's that about? They didn't want Judge Jeanine Pirro speaking the truth about radical Islam. Why can't we tell the truth about radical Islam? What else did they do? They hired Donna Brazil. Donna Brazil, what did she do? She gave Hillary Clinton the debate questions. This is horrible stuff. Why would they hire Donna Brazil? Did they not know their audience? They cut away from Newt Gingrich when Newt Gingrich told the truth about George Soros funding all these left-wing prosecutors in Democrat cities that would not let that would not prosecute Antifa and terrorists. What else they do? They fired Diamond and Silk. Don't you love Diamond and Silk? We will have these people on our network. I'm gonna keep going. They sensationalized COVID-19. Chris Wallace, what about Chris Wallace with his debate failure? President Trump was debating not just Joe Biden, but he was debating Chris Wallace. See, they think they're trying to be fair by hiring liberals. They want to be adjacent to other networks. They do not care about standing alone as a conservative platform. They don't allow free speech. They're covering up obvious election fraud. I mean, I could go on and on and on. This is Fox News. This is supposed conservative news media. But you don't know Fox News the way we know them now. We've seen all of this. Organizers of this said the reason that they are marching from Freedom Square to the Supreme Court is because they believe that this election will ultimately be decided 
in the Supreme Court. This election to be stolen, and we will be out, and we will fight, and we will make our voices heard. It's so obvious. I mean, we woke up on Wednesday morning, thousands of votes going to a candidate and none for the other. The probability of that is near to zero, so it's it's unbelievable. You guys see right through it. We see right through it. That's why we're here. That's why we're supporting our president, and we're advocating for election transparency because this determines the trajectory for elections to come. If we don't stand up for it now, we don't take a stand now, they're going to do the exact same thing in another four years, and then another four years, and then just corruption is going to grow and grow and grow, and we can't, we can't put up with it. That's why we have to t uh, take a stand now, and that's why we're out here today, and, you know, we're signing petitions, we're, we're Tested. doing One, to our president, we're doing all that we can, so you're absolutely right. You know, Biden, he can't say that he didn't know. We, he literally said on camera he had the best election fraud system. So, I mean, we're not surprised. You're absolutely right. It's it's so, it's just so disheartening to see all the corruption happening in front of our eyes and the people disavowing it. Tell One, us a little bit about yourself. So two, I'm, I'm a psychologist that accidentally got test. outed as a Trump supporter when I was a Democrat for 20 years and then went to a Trump rally and wrote an article about it and have been doing this stuff ever since. <laughs> yeah, and Test. it's interesting because when you came out, One. you got so much backlash, right? I did. I wasn't even a Trump supporter at the time, One. honestly. I just thought that the left was insane, and I, I was kind of voting more against the left than for Trump, but the backlash that I got made it so much worse, and it made it very easy to come to the loving, open arms of Trump and honestly actually see what was going on. So it was definitely my red pill moment. Yeah, I remember your article went viral. She wrote... I remind me what the headline it said I went to a MAGA rally this is what happened yeah it was like I was a Democrat for 20 years here's what I experienced at a Trump rally and I, I bet you were ex well I don't want to put words in your mouth but were you expecting white supremacists you were expecting to be attacked or well as soon as it went viral I kind of had paid attention enough that I knew what was gonna come but it's still it's like when it happens to you it's a whole different thing than seeing it happen to someone else it's the most surreal thing of your life when you know all of a sudden your friends that you've known all your life or you know for, for years and years and years start calling you a Nazi and it's like it's like it's insane people have lost their minds now what was your impression going to a Trump rally was it what you expected was it worse was it better what was it oh it was so much better I, I had no idea what to expect honestly I was really scared um, I was nervous leading up to it some of my friends even offered me their pepper spray to take with I me saw that. yeah and I was like I declined but you get there and it's just it's, it's like this rally here which is amazing it's like the energy is so good the people are so happy yeah. it is a stark difference between the uh, Republicans and no one's attacking have I attacked you? Has this, has this lady attacked you? Has my cameraman attacked you? Has Adrian attacked you? Are we burning, looting, and murdering? Are we doing any of that? No. no. We love this country. We want four more years of choice. Four more years. I really love Trump. We're not conceding because we've won the election. There's a lot of Trump supporters that are upset because Biden and his cronies and, and the radical left are trying to steal the election. And uh, you have the left. That basically wants all government control. You have the Antifa over there that basically want fascism. They're, they say that we're fascists, but we're not. They're projecting their own fascism on us. And there was a lot of prayer, a lot of prayer. And I believe that our country needs prayers. Everybody needs to um, ask God for mercy and trust and peace because the country is very, very divided. And I think Trump... Um, is a unifier. I know for many people they see him as a divider, but I believe he's a unifier. As a country, we need to stand up and, and unite and stand together for, for truth and for, um, for our freedom. Absolutely. We are we're definitely, our freedoms are being infringed. I just feel like Donald Trump was cheated out of the election, and it's very just, I feel like every American should be upset. Four more years! We love Trump! We love Trump! We love Trump. And I'd like to, the truth to come out, and I'd like to, the election to be fair. I see. And what are your concerns whether Trump or Biden win the election? Deeply concerned. I would prefer Trump to, uh, to stay in the office. I came from a communist country. I escaped from Vietnam to be here to have my freedom to practice my faith and also to be fully human. And uh, if communists take over our country, where would I go? This is how we do it at Right Start Broadcasting. This is how we do it at Right Start Broadcasting. I want everyone to know that we do support BLM. Biden's laptop matters. I 
telling you, I don't know where lamestream media is. They're probably in the bunker with Joe Biden, but Fox News, Newsmax, all you fake news media. I know the Electoral College is December 14th, I believe. So that is when um, our process of actually choosing a president will will happen. I know Pres er, Joe Biden has has made an office of president-elect. Newsflash, that doesn't actually exist. Um, so we'll see. No one is actually president-elect until the Electoral College on December 14th. So. I, I think it's funny. I've seen a lot of pages and stuff where it's like the office of the president-elect of Joe Biden. And I just look at it and say, well, that's not necessarily a thing because technically Joe Biden isn't even president-elect yet until the electorate votes on uh, who they want the person to be, to be president-elect. Uh, a lot of that goes down to legislatures within those specific states who pick the electors. Uh, so in Georgia, there is a heavily Republican legislature. I believe they have the majority. So it'll be interesting to see in states like that where they're picking Republican electors who are going to have to look at it and say, okay, well, Joe Biden won the popular vote here. Are we going to have to take our electoral votes and give them to give them to Joe Biden? Yeah, and I know, did you see, Philip, the other day, I believe in Pennsylvania, actually my home state, there was a judge who basically said that the, the ballots that came in three days after, which were originally said they could be counted in Pennsylvania, he said that was um, that was not their jurisdiction. The the Secretary of State, I believe, um, didn't have the jurisdiction to make that decision, and even the the courts there in Pennsylvania didn't have the authority and jurisdiction to to make those uh, those calls. That that power lies within the Pennsylvania legislature. Um, so I think that was a bit, really big win for the Trump campaign. We'll see how that plays out. I know some states are having recounts, some are doing audits. So we're really just waiting on a lot of results from there, seeing how those go. Secretary Mike Pompeo, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, uh, said the other day that uh, when asked about transitioning to a Biden administration, he said, I believe there will be a smooth transition to four more years of Donald Trump. So that's something to consider. The people who are the government officials in the Trump administration are very confident they feel like they have this election. They they know that voter fraud took place, and it's just a matter of time. The mainstream media, social media, they don't want you to know that. There's a reason why they are pushing so hard this president-elect narrative. Uh, it's because Joe Biden really isn't president-elect, and we aren't even sure if this win is legitimate or not. Yeah, absolutely. And I think there's no harm in doing the recounts, doing the audits. All that does is prove his legitimacy if he actually did win fairly. Um, and the fact that the mainstream media is trying to um, discount that, I think shows what they're trying, they're trying to hide something, um, that this was maybe not a fair election. Because again, 71 at least million people voted for President Trump. And so to them, uh, Joe Biden is not a, le a legitimate, legitimate, excuse me, um, candidate and president at this president elect at this point. Um, so if he really does want to unify the nation like he's saying he does, um, then why not just prove to everyone that you are legitimate, support the recount efforts, support the audit efforts, prove that you actually did win, and then maybe maybe if you stop um, demonizing Trump supporters, then maybe that's your way um, to do that. You couldn't have the other types of media coming out here. The other types of media are not out here on the street. You don't see CNN, you don't see Fox, you don't see the major networks. You don't even see local affiliates out here because they wouldn't get the type of reception hey, man. that we at RSPN get. Uh, well, he, he, this guy just told us we're number one. All right, so what brings you here today? Obviously you love this president, you've backed this president for four years. Why today? Well, you know, I back the message of making America great again. I think that's amazing. And I, I, I wrote a song called M-A-G-A and it blew up on the internet. Millions of views and I'm so grateful for, uh, for that. There's so much support. Let's talk about the support that the president has within the LBGTQ community. A lot of stereotypes to think if you're a gay and lesbian that you don't belong with Republicans. You know that. You've been very outspoken with that. Well, yeah, I didn't like the idea that because of uh, your sexual preference that you had to vote a certain way. I thought that was really ridiculous. And I just wanted to do what I can to make sure that people know that I'm free. I'm an American. I can vote however I want. I wanted to inspire all of my other LGBT brothers and sisters out there to let them know that they they have options. They don't have to vote a certain way just because of the pressure. I've always, we've had people come up to us and say, thank you for coming out and supporting the president. But let me say this real quick, for the record, the LBGTQ community, if you're someone that stands up for the president, 
That takes a lot of bravery because you're in a culture that is trying to put you in a box. I've seen you in Beverly Hills walk up and down Hollywood Boulevard and that whole area with your MAGA flag. What's some of the feedback you get from that? Well, <laughs> with LGBT community, not, not so great uh, uh, for a lot of them. But there are surprisingly a lot more LGBT people who like Trump and who love the message of making America great again, who uh, also are not are not socialists. They're free market capitalist gays. Yeah. And they support me, and a lot of them support me in secret, but a lot more are coming out. And that's what makes me happy because I wanted them to feel okay to do so. Could California ever turn red? I don't think so. You can take uh, a little bit of common sense, wrap it in humor, and make it an easier pill to swallow, and it works. Yeah, there you go. Where do we go from here? I know that a lot of these states are still being contested. And things are in courts. At the end of the day, when the dust settles, what do you think happens? Well, I think uh, the patriots are going to rise to the top. I think the folks who really love this country uh, are going to go through the uh, adversity of this event, regardless of what the outcome is going to be. And the folks who really love this country are going to rise up. Right, we got a live look at Alex Jones walking through here with Right Side Broadcasting. How you doing? Thank you very love much. You, brother. Love your great work. Yeah. See you over the thing. Here we, we go. love you, Right Side. We love Right Side. We're going to watch them come. We're going to jump into this line here. Let's go ahead and jump in. Um, anyway, we'll see you later, Chad. Uh, here we are. If you're just now joining us, we are live just outside Freedom Plaza, making our way uh, to the stage. And this is, a, I guess, the security pressing for the uh, speaker's schedule for today. And from what I understand, though, speakers for about an hour, therefore probably starting the walk at around 1 p.m. My name is Cindy Chapian, and I am the Director of Coalitions for Women for America First. And on behalf of our organization, who kind of had this crazy idea the day after the election to throw a small rally. <laughs> so, it's turned into a massive rally. I just want to say welcome to D.C. That was not very impressive. Let's give that one more shot. Welcome to D.C. Much better. So our team has managed to pull together, Women for America First has managed to pull together a feat that, if I do say so myself, was pretty impressive. This is not about us, this is about you guys. We had, like I said, a crazy idea to do this and it's turned into a phenomenal outpouring of support for this president. We see what's going on. That's right. We see what's going on and we are here to say, stop the steal, because it's not gonna happen. All right, so that's pretty much it. Again, welcome from Women for America First. We're so glad to have you. I will just say one more thing. Obviously we are here in mass, but there are opposition groups that are surrounding and planning to try and agitate. Just, just ignore them. Ignore them. Pretend like they're not there. Just, they, they don't even exist because you know what? We the people are speaking and they're scared. They're scared. So they're gonna try, listen, they're gonna try and agitate you. They're gonna try and invoke, they're gonna try and invoke violence. We're not here for violence. We're here for a peaceful protest, a peaceful show of support just to hear our, have our voices be heard. Is CJ from the Deplorable Choir? CJ, can you come on up? How y'all doing? Oh my gosh, this is the most beautiful sight, is it not? Well, I'm CJ and I like to sing songs about Trump, but yeah, but today I'm singing the national anthem, which is my favorite and I want y'all to sing with me okay hold on and I'm gonna take a picture of y'all smile all right sing with me oh say can you see by the dawn's early light what's so proudly we hail at the Twilight's last gleaming has brought stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watch Were so gallantly streaming And the rockets regular The bombs Banner yet 
When I say Donald, you say Trump. Donald. Donald. When I say Donald, you say Trump. Donald. Donald. When I say President, you say Trump. President. President. USA. 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 All right, all right, all right. Listen. My name is Paris Denard. You might have seen me on television with Black Voices for Trump with the campaign. And I tell you, this is a movement. They doubted that this could happen, but turn to the media and tell them we are here and we're not going anywhere. Let them know. Thank you to Amy Kramer for organizing this opportunity for us to come together and remind the world that no matter what the media says, there are over 72 million people who aren't going to be silenced. We aren't going to hide. We are going to loudly proclaim that we support President Donald J. Trump. We support President Trump's inclusive agenda that led to unprecedented support for HBCUs, school choice, lower taxes, deregulation, support for the unborn, and expanding our party with the president winning the most votes for Republican from minorities since 1960. In fact, because of Black Voices for Trump and the campaign, the RNC, and all of you, we got 12% of the Black vote. With an amazing ground game, we flipped 11 House seats and held the Senate and didn't lose one local chamber. We are here today to say with one loud voice, we will fight for the integrity of our elections. We will demand transparency. And we will stop the steal. We won't let them cancel America first. We won't let them cancel Make America Great Again. We won't let them cancel our voices. We won't let them cancel our votes. We are going to stand together and proclaim you can't stop us from supporting the greatest president of the United States of America, President Donald J. Trump. What's going on, Washington, D.C.? What's going on, Patriots of America? And what is going on to all them freedom fighters who came from all over this nation to this nation's capital to show support for their president? Who's here for Trump? My name is Chandler Crump, and I'm here for Trump as well. I'm here for America, and I'm here for the future. We saw something incredible just last week. We saw that election happen, and we were all so hopeful going into it. We knew we had this election in the bag. We were going to fight for it, and we were going to win, and that is what we did. But the left, they do something interesting. They do something that has never been done before in American history since them. They do immediate and strong voter fraud, election fraud. Yeah, boo that. You know, it's always them that say they stand for democracy. But how come they're canceling out our voices? Canceling out American voices, canceling out patriotic voices that want to stand for a president that does something for them. How come they cancel that out? I say we stop the steal. Yes, stop the steal. Stop the steal. Raise those flags up. Raise those banners up. All the way up. All the way up. You guys are amazing. I tell you that much. I want to thank each and every person that came out here all over America to spend your Saturday here with us in Freedom Plaza, Washington, D.C because we stand for something greater than ourselves. We stand for America. We stand to keep America great. We stand to make America great. And we stand to fight for the future. I'm 16 years old, and I'm a member of Generation Z. Which means 
that America is mine for a long time. It's been yours, and I know there's plenty of young people. You guys are fighting for it now, I'm fighting for it now, but I'm fighting so that there's a future for each and every one of us. Ronald Reagan said uh, that freedom is never a generation away from death. I am that generation that's going to keep fighting. We are the hero generation. And with your support, with your fight, with your strength, with your courage, and with your energy, we are going to keep America great for the next 10, 20, 30, and 40 years. We will not let America fall. We will not let America die. We will keep America great. We will make America great. And we will make this nation something to remember for all time. President Trump is one of the best presidents that has ever graced this nation. And we're going to fight for another four years. We're not going to let them steal this election. We're not going to let them steal America. We're not going to stand for a faux Joe Biden presidency. We're not going to stand for it. We're going to fight, fight, fight. And like Trump says, we're going to win, win, win. Say it with me now. Win, win, win. Win, win, win. Win, win, win. Win, win, win. Thank you guys so much. Every generation has had to face an evil of some kind. Typically it's been from abroad, it was foreign, now it's domestic. But our constitution prepared us for enemies both foreign and domestic. We will fight this fight and we will win this fight, but in order to win, you must first know your enemy. And that's what I've dedicated myself to in my writings and my speeches, is to know, because they didn't just come out of nowhere. What you're witnessing now is the fruition of a plan long in the works. You are watching the culmination of a plan that started with the 60s radicals who did not hide the fact that they sought to overthrow this country. They did not hide the fact that they were socialists and they were bad, bad people. One of them goes by the name of William Ayers. William Ayers founded a terrorist group called the Weather Underground. Such despicable human beings that at the very first meeting of the Weather Underground, they took time out to cheer Charles Manson. Because Charles Manson had done, or at least attempted to do, what the Democratic Party was attempting to do, what the radicals were attempting to do, which is to divide and conquer. That's what Helter Skelter meant. Helter Skelter was a cataclysmic race war. And that's what the Democratic Party has been trying to start since the 60s radicals. Since Bernadine Dorn, the wife of William Ayers, approached a bank of microphones and said, Hi, I'm Bernadine Dorn, and I'm going to read to you a declaration of war. And they sought to start that war by dividing us by race, which is why when the radicals came along, they didn't join the party of abolition. They didn't join the party of women's suffrage. They joined the party of George Wallace and segregation and Jim Crow. Because it didn't matter to them then or now whether whites hated blacks or blacks hated whites so long as we hated each other. They tried to foment a revolution and they failed because nobody who had lived in the real world, the last of the great generations, wanted any part of the socialism they were selling. Millions had fled that socialism under Hitler to come here. Millions had fled that socialism under Stalin to come here. And millions more went overseas to fight those things. And when they came home, they wanted no part of what they are selling then and now. There's a great story in my book. Forgive me, I have to do it. It's called The Woke Supremacy. That's what one does. Where Muhammad Ali, the great boxer, went over to Africa to train for a big fight in Zaire. And when he returned, they asked him, the reporters asked him, what do you think of Africa, Muhammad? Now remember, this was a black man from the then democratically controlled South. This was a black man who had already converted to Islam. This was a black Muslim man. They said, Muhammad, what did you think of Africa? And he said, quote, thank God my granddaddy got on that boat. 
So even back then in the hardest times, people knew that America was in fact great. And so when this revolution failed, they went underground. They, they started something called the Long March Through the Institutions. They took over these schools and turned it into their Ministry of Indoctrination. They took over the news and entertainment industries and turned it into their Ministry of Propaganda. Now they have their Ministry of Social Communications. And it was Mark Rudd, and then I'll finish up, but it was Mark Rudd, one of the founders, another despicable man who said it must be wonderful to kill a pig, talking about cops, the bloodier the better. That's the kind of people who trained this generation. You're, you're, you're not booing me, right? <laughs> and you're not saying Bruce, right? Mark Rudd said, the true flowering of the 60s will come in the 90s when we've taken over the institutions. Well, he was wrong only because he missed the obvious. Once they'd taken over the institutions, they then had to use them to brainwash successive generations. Well, 30 years from the 60s to the 90s, what's 30 years from the 90s? Which is why they finally taken off their masks which is why they're finally calling themselves what they've always been, socialists. It's why they're again killing cops. This has been a long time coming, and this is a revolution that they are attempting. I don't care if they put a smiley face or an old man's face in front of it. They did that with Big Brother. All right, Joe Biden is just a face. He's a figurehead for the evil that lurks behind him. But I will tell you this. I, I will tell you this, we have always been slow to the fight. As Americans, we don't want to fight. We are the true liberals, lowercase l, live and let live. We've got other things to do with our lives than fight. We got family, we got schools, we got, we got businesses. We were slow to World War I, we were slow to World War II, we were slow to the Cold War, and we were slow to the culture war. But we won World War I, we won World War II, we won the Cold War, and we will win the Culture War. You must come together, you must stand for your rights, and we must win! Yeah. Scott Pressler always says it, MVP, this is a movement of love, but we must fight. We must stand up to the liars and the fake news. We must stand up to the big tech oligarchs who want to silence us. We must fight. When we march to the Supreme Court, we have a message to send. This, our institutions have been corrupted and weaponized against we the people. And that's what Joe Biden's agenda is. There is no way that senile old fool beat the hardest working and greatest president ever. I love you guys. Thank you for being here. We'll see you at the Supreme Court. The grassroots, the silent majority is loud and we are alive and well. We are here to stop the steal. Say it with me. Stop the steal. Stop the steal. Stop the steal. Stop the steal. We know. We know this election was stolen. Do we really believe that the party who believes that looting is justified in the name of social justice didn't steal this election in the name of social justice. I am not going to watch my country be destroyed from within by the communists, by the Marxists, by the socialists. That have found a home in the Democrat party. Why is it that communists and Marxists and socialists find a home in the Democrat Party? It's because that's where they are welcomed. 
We don't want to fundamentally transform this country. We will defend it with our lives. We will defend this country with our lives. We will defend this president with our lives. We are going to march all the way to the Supreme Court and our fight does not stop at the Supreme Court. We take the fight back to our precincts. We take them back to our neighborhoods and we make for damn sure that our local elected officials are elected fairly and they are elected squarely and that our voice, which is our vote, is not stolen. Hello, hello, hello! This is the most beautiful crowd I have ever seen in my life. My name is Courtney Holland. I'm a conservative activist out of Nevada. And I'm a proud Nevadan here to tell you that Nevada is MAGA country. This election was stolen from us. It is critical to the world that they see what happened in Nevada and across this country with how the Democrats have stolen this election. We here are out here today from all around the country to demand transparency. We want a free, fair, transparent election. And we want to stop the steal, am I right? All right. For five days out in Nevada, I helped lead hundreds of Nevadans standing in front of the Clark County Election Department. We are fired up. And we saw this happen in Michigan, in Wisconsin, in Georgia, in Arizona, because we want to be loud. I ask you all, we can no longer be the silent majority. We need to be the loud majority. Transparency should not be political. We are here to fight for every person's vote. I don't care if you're a Democrat, a Libertarian, an Independent, or a Republican. All of your votes matter. All of your votes matter. Every time an illegal ballot is cast, it silences one of your voices out there. And what we are witnessing today is a modern day coup to take over this country. We cannot let that happen. So I have a call to action for all of you. This does not end today. Am I right? Are you going to go back home and are you going to fight? All right. Our president fought for us for four years. So I ask you this. Are you ready to fight for your president? Yes. All right. Stop the steal. 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 What's up, Washington, D.C.? My name is Mike Kudre. I am a conservative activist from Las Vegas. Along with Courtney and Megan, we were leading the protests, the Stop the Steal protests out there. And it's incredible to see all these people here today. At the end of the day, the one thing that we want is a fair and honest and open election. We will not allow this to be stolen from the people of this country. There is no way that they can just find 200,000 votes overnight, all of them go to Biden, and it all is in the key swing states that Trump needs to secure the presidency. We've got major problems with the election infrastructure in this country. And they need to be fixed, and they need to be, the votes need to be audited, not just recounted, they need to be audited. We need to audit the votes to make sure every vote is legal and valid. Trump is an absolute warrior, okay? He is a fighter. 
He fights everything they throw at him. He fought off the Russia hoax. He fought off all the media slander. He even got COVID and kicked COVID in its ass. And we will be the same and we will fight for our president. He is the legitimate president. We will not allow this election to be stolen and we will be out and we will fight and we will make our voices heard. Thank you guys so much for being out here. I love you all. How's everybody doing? This is beautiful. Can we do a chant? All right, I love y'all. Stop the steal! 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 Those are my people! My name is Ali Alexander. I'm the national organizer for Stop the Steal. Thank you. How many of y'all were at your state capitol last weekend? There were 30,250. Right now at all 50 state capitals, there's more. And we got tens of thousands coming into town here. We're going to make our voices heard and we're going to protect this president by stopping the steal. Now look, I'm, you know, these other guys, they're fiery speakers, I'm more of an organizer. December 14th is the date that we all need to remember. Next week, we're going to start lobbying the state legislature of Pennsylvania, of Wisconsin, of Michigan, of Arizona, and Georgia. And we're going to tell them to ignore the rigged elections and send Republican electors to the Electoral College. Or, or... We're going to deprive both candidates of 270. Then we'll send it to the House of Representatives where Donald J. Trump will win. Trump won. 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 Let's terrify this town. Let me fix this for a second. <laughs> Hello, everyone. These are indeed interesting times. Many would label me because where I come from and because of how I look. But there's a label I dislike the most, minority. A word used to imply some people are not capable to succeed for themselves. But no, that is not me. I was not raised to inspire pity from anyone but the owner of my destiny. I am part of the majority. I am an American. The United States is the best country in the world to succeed. That was clear to me. Even before the thought of immigrating to the great nation crossed my mind, I believe President Trump holds dearly, not only in words, but in actions. He's a president that provides the necessary tools to build the American future on solid ground. Because he knows that just hope may only build a future on loose sand. President Trump knows that our nation's strength comes with the understanding that we must put America first together. <laughs> President Trump fight for us, it's time to fight for him. <laughs> this election evoked many memories from voting days in my home country, Venezuela. Hearing in the United States the same garbage socialists sold to Venezuelans was unbelievable. Seeing people destroyed their communities was heartbreaking. But politicians in action to protect their constituents 
was infuriating. From experience, I can tell you that such socialist ideas and destruction will not just hurt some people, it will get closer to you, to everyone's doorstep. It will take the last block received from President, President Trump and will clean your tears with hope. We have a long way and we have a long and bumpy journey ahead of us. We all, and I mean Democrats, Independents, Republicans, and even those who were too young to vote this time, need to demand a clear election. Yes, yes. Thus, using all legal procedures to guarantee the election's integrity is the right thing to do. Let's remember that the constitutional process determines the next president, not the biased mainstream media. Let this be an awakening of citizens who are more politically active, participate in town halls, meet their legislators to discuss community issues, and keep them accountable. Together, we'll make sure that we preserve the American dream and keep socialism away. Woo! By the way, I'm a gun owner, proud Second Amendment advocate, competitive shooter, and Olympian. No minority here. Too, too strong for that. This is a country in which the people are the owners of our destiny, aren't we? We refuse to be the beggars of the government, don't we? We're eager to protect, present, preserve, and defend our constitution, especially our Second Amendment, aren't we? And we demand those who interfere in our election system receive the full force of the law, don't we? Yes. Oh, America, Woo. the land of the free and home of the brave. Yes. I was not born here, but God is my witness yes. that I feel you through my veins because here is where true freedom exists and dreams are conquered. Yes. Thank you. God bless our president. Let's keep America great. Stop the steal. And God bless America. My message to you this afternoon is very, very simple. We have in Arizona 11 electoral votes. And Madam Chair, wherever you are back there, Arizona is ready to cast 11 electoral votes for the next President of the United States, Donald J. Trump. It's time that each one of us, no matter where we're from, what corner of the country, go home and fight for Donald J. Trump. God bless you. God bless Donald Dre Trump. And God bless America. Thank you very much. My name is Tracy Beans. I'm an independent investigative journalist and the editor in chief of UncoverDC.com. We do actual journalism. The fake news is the enemy of the people. The reason why there's such a divide in this country is because the media has lied to people for decades. You all saw through the bull, and you're here to support elections with integrity and our president for four more years. The media is supposed to be the fifth estate that brings you information so you can make informed decisions. That's gone by the wayside. So independent journalists are coming back to make the media 
likable again. Support your independent journalists. Support the president and his family. Support transparency and integrity in our elections. God bless all of you and God bless the United States of America. CNN sucks. CNN sucks. CNN sucks. CNN sucks. CNN sucks. Fox News 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 sucks. How bad is Fox News now? What the hell happened? What the hell happened? What a disgrace. They are the enemy of the people, and I have a message for the enemy of the people, the fake news media. You do not decide who the President of the United States is. We the people do. So we're watching Fox News, I'm with some friends, Charlie Kirk, you guys love Charlie Kirk? So we're watching the election results come in. We're up big in Wisconsin. We're up big in Michigan. We're up big in Pennsylvania. We're everybody's so happy. We're gonna win. Trump goes on TV. He declares victory because he rightfully won. And then everybody goes to sleep. And then what happens? And then this, the cheating started, right? And the fraud started. They started finding hundreds of thousands of ballots in the dead of night when everybody's sleeping. Do you guys believe the results of this election so far? No! Do not give an inch. The media, the left, and the establishment Republicans are expecting you to get tired. Are you going to get tired? No! We're going to fight for President Trump every single day because he spent four years fighting for us. We will not get tired. We will not be silent. We will be out here every single day all over the country until we stop the greatest scam in the history of our nation. This should not happen in the United States of America. We are the most successful country in the history of the world. And there's a software from hell called Dominion. Ha have you noticed that the Dominion glitches only glitch in one direction? They never find hundreds of thousands of ballots for Donald J. Trump. It's only for Joe Biden. And we're never going to accept Joe Biden as the President of the United States. Hunter Biden should be in jail. Lock him up! 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 We are not letting that crackhead and that pedophile in our house. God bless you. God bless President Trump. And God bless the United States of America. Let's win this. My name is Bianca Gracia, the president of Latinos for Trump organization. Also, the Blexit Texas State Director. Let me tell you, everybody's wondering what happened down in Texas in the border. We are what happened. The Democrats are pissed off and since 2016, I vowed to get double those numbers from 29% and I said, I'm gonna get the president 50 to 60% of the Hispanic Latino vote. We built an army and that's exactly what we did. As goes Texas, goes the nation. Beto, you ain't coming and taking nothing, buddy. We are Benjamin. We are Benjamins and we are Debras. And let me tell you something, we are armored up. Let me tell you, our heritage was at the Battle of San Jacinto, was at the Battle of the Alamo. Mexicans were the first to get the Medal of Honor. And if you think that we're going to stop fighting now for our freedom and liberty? You got something coming. Four more years. Four more years. Four more years. Four more years. And I just have one more message for you, Mr. President.
President Donald J. Trump. Latinos for Trump. Hashtag we are woke and hashtag we are the storm. All right, stop the steal. Stop the steal. Stop the steal. Stop the steal. Thank y'all so much. Our organization is, is, is united with people from Lexit, like Jesse Holguin. We made it a point to make sure that the Lexit or Latinos are exiting the Democrat Party. You do not own us. We are God-loving people. We are family-oriented. And we will die for this country. Get ready, Latinos for Trump! Thank you all and God bless you and God bless this United States of America and God bless Donald J. Trump. Good morning, America, guys. Let's make one thing clear to the media here. It is not Joe Biden, who's the President of the United States. They don't decide that. We decide that. Every single person here, the media doesn't tell us who the president is. CNN doesn't tell us who the president is. We decide who the president of these United States is. And we have decided that Donald J. Trump is our president. He's our president. He's our president. There will be four more years of this president. Just a week ago, I was proud to cast the first ballot of my life for this president. And I will not allow that vote to be stolen. I will not allow them through their nefarious tactics to steal this election away from the American people. Because if we let them do it again, if we let them do it now, they'll do it four years from now. They'll do it again and again and again. We will lose our country. We will lose our democracy. But what they do not realize is that we are here and we will stand up and fight. Every single one of you. We are in this for the long haul. We are not going to roll over and allow our country to be taken away from us. We're not going to allow our country to be stolen away from us. What they thought is they thought we didn't exist. But if you look around, you see the person next to you, and I see the people all the way back there today, guess what, guys? We do indeed exist. We exist. We exist. Donald Trump didn't need dead people voting for him because he had every single one of you. Every single one of you. This election, the, the stakes cannot be overstated. We are in a battle for our country's foundational values. We are again at that point that Reagan once talked about it. We are in a time of choosing where we must decide what type of nation we will be. Will we be a nation of lawlessness and open borders or will we be a nation of law and order? A nation where the American people are put first, where we are still able to say, God bless America. That is the country I want to live in. That is the country that I love. That is the country that I adore. And that is the country that we are out here today to fight for, to protect, and to defend. And we will win. We will win. They think they've got us going. They think they've got us down. But what they have under underestimated in this fight is the heart and dedication and the love for our country we have. America is the greatest nation in the world, but it is made great by the continued activism, the continued work and perseverance of patriots like yourself. And what they realize is that we are not taking any off days. The fight is just beginning. And we are in the game for the long haul. We will make America great again. We will keep America great. And Donald Trump will be the president of these United States for four more years. Thank you. American Priority's primary mission is to protect and defend free speech. Yes. Defending our rights and words and actions is our most precious right under the Constitution. The left and big tech and, of course, the corporate media have tried to stifle us. They've tried to marginalize us. They call us names and they give us labels to create division amongst us. But we ignore them and we hold on to our own. We have stood by our values and beliefs. 
They use technology to censor us with labels and phony fact checkers. But we wear those badges of honor because we are fighting a righteous mission. We have been tolerant to all they tried to do to deprive us of our rights as Americans because we know better. Now they are censoring our president. They are censoring the truth about our election. They are trying to gaslight us into believing something we know is not true. Freedom of speech to vote for our leaders should not be trifled with. We are standing our ground. We are no longer going to allow injustice in our lives. It is time for our leaders to know that the line is drawn here and they should cross no further. Our leaders need to understand that we give them the privilege to lead us. And without us supporting them, they are nothing. We stand for equal rights, equal justice under the Constitution. We stand for free speech under the Constitution. President Trump fights for us every day. President Trump fights for law and order. President Trump fights for the oh, Constitution because that makes us all equal under the law. Today we stand in support of our true president, President Donald J. Trump. President Trump. Because President Trump brought national attention to the city of Baltimore and I saw while everybody else is pointing the finger and they were blaming and they were scapegoating but nobody was taking action and I said I'm going to the city of Baltimore and in one day we picked up 12 tons of trash in 12 hours and afterwards I went home to my mom and I was like ma I'm really good at picking up trash. <laughs> Her heart swelled with pride, as you imagine. And the reason why I bring up this story is because I want you to realize what we're doing here. You are the people taking action. You aren't pointing the finger. You aren't scapegoating. You aren't blaming. You are here! Yeah. And after Baltimore, I didn't stop. I went to Atlanta, Chicago, Denver, Duquesne, Detroit, Houston, Los Angeles, Kenosha, Milwaukee, Miami, Portland, Pittsburgh, Philly. And I was even protested for picking up trash in San Francisco, California. Well, Nancy Pelosi, hear us now. I want people to know that this is not just a Trump rally. This is a truth rally! <laughs> and to speak the truth is an act of love. And I want you to realize that that is what this movement is about. This is a movement based on love! <laughs> And I want you guys to know, I feel this within my bones, within my spirit, from the top of my head to the tips of my toes. And I promise you, as I stand before you, I'm not giving up. Never! I will fight peacefully. I will give everything I have to fight for truth and justice because Woo! freedom is worth fighting for. And I'm so glad you're here, but don't let this be the only time that you take action. When you go home, you're going to call your state legislators and your congressmen, and you are going to demand an audit of the vote in every single state. And 
And I make one last promise to you. We are going to march to the Supreme Court, and after I am done with you here in D.C., I am going to Georgia, and we are going to hold the Senate! I want you guys to know that you have changed my life. I'm deeply grateful, I'm deeply humbled, and I'm deeply honored. And I look forward to remaining in this fight with you. And President Trump, we have your back! We're back here in front of the Trump International Hotel as uh, thousands and thousands of people, uh, brick suit, have walked by us. And I tell you right now, you're the most recognized, outside of Donald Trump right now, you might be the most recognizable man here. I, I you know, I, I, it's very possible. <laughs> it's very possible. I mean, I had, uh, from going to rallies and uh, having been lucky enough to be in the right place and call up on stage a few times. I was already recognizable, and and now I, you know, emerged that with the love for RSBN, and it's oh. there's a lot of people, a lot it, of people. It that is incredible, us. absolutely, and of course, with all the developments over the last couple of weeks with the election, it's more important that you support uh, outlets like Right Side uh, Broadcasting because we are viewers supported by you. Official events at Freedom Plaza, because there will be many unofficial ones, but the official events at Freedom Plaza to our right are now done. People are now walking to our left, to the east down Pennsylvania Boulevard. And uh, we'll soon get to Constitution and Constitution Avenue, I believe. And then from there to the Supreme Court. Joe Biden is able to get in there. He will put America under permanent lockdown siege until we're brought to our knees. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, President Trump by every metric won this election. And that's why the corporate media, that's why the corporate media, including Fox News, will not let anybody on to show the proven fraud in Pennsylvania, in Michigan, in Arizona, in Georgia, in Nevada, and in Minnesota. Alex, we love you! President Trump won by an even bigger margin, and the evidence of fraud is flooding out. And now big tech, that's right. the number one China we is even suppressing people's yeah, text messages on. because the criminals are scared of you. <laughs> the truest thing President Trump ever said was, they're not coming after me, they're coming after you. And the globalists know there's been a populist revolution worldwide. They know from Brazil to the UK there's a huge awakening. And they know from Africa to Canada, from Russia to Japan, there is an amazing awakening all over the world as free humanity dreams of a better future, not under Bill Gates and the New World Order. So I want to salute and I want to thank and I want to tell you all you're incredible. The D.C. police are believing there's upwards of 100,000 people lined all the way back from where we came from. And more are coming. And this is just the beginning. Because no matter what happens with Trump, it's 1776 time. 1776. 1776. 1776! 1776! 1776! 1776! 1776! Death to the New World Order! Death to tyranny! And life to America and our unborn children! The pedophile globalist and their attempted election steal and the Clinton blackmail rings have only summoned the sleeping giant that is America. And you, and you, you are the tip of the spear. 
from all over this great land. Old, young, male, female, black, white, gay, straight. You want the American dream? You're not letting the globalists take it. And we're unified in our love of America, our love of God, our love of President Trump, and our love of our shared vision, and our red blood. We are unified by our spirit that God made and our connection to the Creator and the universe and our children. And we are unified. And this is the genesis point of the new revolution of information. The Satanist pedophiles and the Democrats represent knew the world awakening was here. And so you're seeing right now their desperate operation against humanity. And make no mistake, they control the corporations, they control Hollywood, they control the blue cities and blue states and other governments. And they're going to stay locked down until you all go on welfare, until you all get a guaranteed universal income so they can force you to waive your rights to be forcibly inoculated. <laughs> Biden's, Biden's head of this new COVID task force, Biden, the fake president, says kill old people at 75. That's Ezekiel Emanuel. And Ezekiel Emanuel says, make people that get food stamps take, take Bill Gates' deadly vaccine. That violates the Geneva Convention. That violates the Nuremberg Code. And when you do it, you're coming at the American people with violence. And the American people have a right and a duty to resist by any means necessary. So like I told him in Dallas in a speech I gave 12 years ago, I don't know how all this fight's going to end, but if the New World Order wants a fight, you better believe they've got one. Despite all their censorship, despite all their intimidation, despite all their attacks, despite all their lies trying to divide us, we are together and we are strong and we are unified and we are going to win. Trump is our president. 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 You, you here today are at the second July 4th, 1776. You know what this day is? Saturday, November 14th, 2020, will be celebrated for hundreds of years as the second American Revolution. We declare independence against the UN. We declare independence from the Communist Chinese. We declare independence from the enemy of America, CNN. And we declare independence from that communist Chinese agent, Joe Biden, and his demonic pedophile family. And we tell them, we believe in peace, but we are bringing you the war of information. And if you then attempt to shut our speech down and attack us, we will defend ourselves. Freedom. 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 On this beautiful day that God has appointed for the second American Revolution to commence, I just want you all to look at yourselves and at your soul and realize how amazing it is that you made the trek here and that your spirit and what you've ignited here will turn the tide against these degenerate globalists and this is the beginning of the end of their new world order. Even if God forbid they kill President Trump, or set up a false flag, or steal this election. America is awake now, and America gets how serious the situation is, and America is rising. USA, 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 USA.
USA! All of you that came here today, whether you be male, female, white, black, Hispanic, Asian, old, young, you are all as great as an American as George Washington was because you have the spirit of liberty burning in your soul. And I can feel that incredible energy today. And I can only tell you this, things are going to get rough. Things are going to get tough. But if we expose the globalists being behind the COVID-19 bioweapon attack, and the media chicken little fear, and Fauci and Gates running the Wuhan lab that's on record. They are so scared of that. And if we simply expose that, they're gonna have to back down and stop. But because they're running asymmetrical, untraditional, psychological war on us, they're able to hide the shadows. But we're here to call out, not just Joe Biden, their puppet, but Bill Gates, Fauci, Obama, the Clintons, the chi -coms, the EU. We know the COVID-19 lockdown is a siege operation to bankrupt us and that China's open for business. And we know the Democrats call it a lockdown because that's what you do in a prison. Well, we're not prisoners on the Democrat plantation anymore. We're off the Democrat plantation and we're free. USA, 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 to Michigan, to Pennsylvania, all of them are enemies and the equivalent of Nazis, and they are to be overthrown. <laughs> the Supreme Court of Michigan openly said that this was tyrannical and that the governor had become a dictator. These people are sick, and it's time to tell them that we are not submitting to them anymore. Now here's the most important thing to understand. We must not submit. We must get in these people's faces every day. And the minions they've scared, we've got to educate them about what's happening. America is under attack. The globalists are making their move against us. And now, ladies and gentlemen, is just the beginning of turning the tide. We should all pray for President Trump, and I'm gonna say a brief prayer and I'm done. Our Heavenly Father, we are very thankful for those that you've touched their heart to be here today, and we see your spirit moving across the land, and we thank you for your divine inspiration. We thank you for your guidance as you lead God and direct us, and we pray, oh Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, to heal our land and to put a hedge of protection up around President Trump and to protect the whistleblowers and to have their news come out and the people be awakened. And we thank you, God, for the human spirit that shines so bright across the world, but so very bright in America. And we commend you, God, for everything you've done and thank you and ask you to give us your blessing and help us move forward against this evil and we ask you to continue to bless our nation and we absolutely commit to you on your holy altar to never submit to satan and these globalist pedophiles and we will defeat their new world order amen usa 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 we have only begun to fight we have only begun to fight we have only begun to fight. We have only begun to fight. We have only begun to fight. I salute you all. Got some more great speakers. God bless you and keep up the fight. History happened here today. Give it up for Alex Jones, everybody! If they can rig this election, they'll be able to rig any election moving forward once they're in power, and we do not want that. Yeah, I mean, if we we're silent people! now, we can't expect anything to change in the future if we're not standing up for what is right in the laws of this country now. We gotta stand behind our president, right? Yeah. Donald H. 
Trump. Now I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna tell you something. I'm a very spiritual woman. And I knew four years ago the Lord laid me down in a dream. And in that dream, he showed me the president. And I, you know, after eight years of that foolishness, because we all know the enemy is the author of confusion, right? I said, you know what? I got to get behind the president. Something was wrong. Everybody was attacking our president. And I found that very problematic. So I went on a 12-day fast. And I sought the Holy Spirit. And I began to stand in the gap for our president. And I'm going to tell you something. I want you all to be encouraged, right? It might be a dark time right now, but know that God is in the midst of the plan. We got to trust the plan. It don't matter what it looks like right now. Don't be dismayed. Don't, don't be dismayed. And keep the faith. Because our faith is being tested. That's all. That's all it is. But I'm going to tell you something. We're almost there. We are almost there. And I promise you, my sisters and brothers, because all of you are my sisters and brothers, victory will be ours. Come on. Trump 2020 and no weapon formed against Trump and the Patriots shall prosper. We're just in the middle of Pennsylvania Avenue and whatever the cross street here is, here is in front of Trump International Hotel and we have just been bombed by love and support from our viewers. Uh, of course, with the suit, everyone recognizes you, but Zoe, what does it feel like to work for Right Side and, and receive so much admiration for what we do? Well, uh, Brian, I'm honored. I'm honored and there's no words to explain the amount of, uh, the feeling, I should say, the feeling that I have being out here and amongst all of these American patriots. You know, this is what matters here in America, us coming together in unity, standing up for our rights and standing up again for someone who's wanting to keep America free. Henry Davis, I met you uh, several years ago and of course you became internet famous, you've been on Fox News, you've been on yep. Bill O'Reilly, you've been on yep. Hannity, you've been yep. on all these programs because I think from the very start you were really intricate of getting the African American uh, population behind this president. Yep. What is it about President Trump that you love so much? His integrity. I love his integrity. I love the way he speaks his mind. He's just like me. He don't hold back. He, he's not afraid to say what's really on his mind, and he's the greatest thing, in my opinion, that ever happened to black people as far as presidents yeah. are concerned. And you've walked in the inner cities, and you've called out yeah. other politicians for yeah. not reinvesting in the inner city, and you've actually you've done a lot of work to get attention on areas that need yeah. the money. Yeah, what we've done uh, is uh, I've, I've, I've worked with... Um, the St. Louis Blight Authority, Bill Palti, and Jack Dorsey, uh, owner of Twitter, they came to St. Louis and we knocked down 40 uh, vacant buildings, uh, which people go in, homeless people, some people overdose and all that type of stuff. We build playgrounds for the neighborhood community. Uh, we, we feed the homeless people. I have a charity called, uh, uh, a nonprofit called uh, Conservative Urban Project. Okay. Uh, but enough about me, Brian. I just wanna, <laughs> I wanna say, I just wanna say that you do, I knew you way back, and you were one of the first people to bring me on your show, man. And I just want to say to America and to everybody watching right now, and especially to this, this network, y'all got a gym right here. Y'all got somebody nice. right here that's true, that's down for what he, and he's, he's a stand-up guy. I love you, man. I appreciate I really that. thank you for all that you've done for me and my platform. Yeah. I ain't for the crown national on, on, on the network. You got probably about a million Brian, people watching this right now. But that's... Brian, I'm telling y'all, Brian, this dude right here, he's a stand-up guy. I love you, man. I'll right. talk to you Let's later. Let's hug it out right here. Let's hug it out. Thank you very much. Thank you very I'm much. I'm telling y'all, this and, is the man right here. And social media for Henry Davis is what? Henry Davis. Y'all can follow me on Facebook at Henry Davis. Go on Twitter, Henry Hood Davis. I'm on Parlor at Henry Hood Davis. I'm the only black Donald Trump supporter, famous, that's fighting for the hood. I'm the only one. And I stand on that. Yeah. God bless you, Thanks, man. Brian. Good work there. Good to you, see man. you. I love I you love more. You, Great seeing you out Go here. Go Trump. Go Trump. Go Trump or, or, or die, right? Yeah, what a, what a view we're taking a look at right now, and and of course you, see, you I'm starting to see a lot of people, uh, brick walking back towards us, and I don't know if that's because they're turning them around, 
and coming back this way? My guess is that they've realized that they're not going to be make, able to make it to the Supreme Court. Yeah, uh, that many saw, people. We right. saw people going this way for at least almost um, 40 minutes before the rally was officially over. So anybody who stayed at Freedom Plaza, anybody who stayed at Freedom Plaza and then decided to go to the Supreme Court, yeah. there's no way they're making it anywhere near the front. They there's no way they might not even be able to make it. So. You know, I mean, there's people, I think they're, we're just seeing a bounce back where people have gotten as far yeah. as they can get and they're saying, it's still, we're not going to be able to make it and we're going to turn back. Uh, they're, not, they're not coming back because they don't support the president. Oh, no. Because just, they don't want to see the venue. I think it's just a matter of, I think they that, can't get in. <laughs> yeah, there's just, there's just more people here than the event can fit. Now, the spin on that will be there were only X thousands of people at the Supreme Court and they won't be talking about all the people who left the Supreme Court steps and actually started going back to their cars or back to the hotels because literally they might have been as far as a mile away, not able to hear anything, let alone see anything. Well, it's interesting you say that because earlier President Trump did a drive by at about 1030 uh, outside of Freedom Plaza and did a drive by, did a little circle U-turn. We got a little footage of him and, and that was a special moment. I pledge allegiance of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can I sing the national anthem? Hi guys, my name is Olivia. I'm with Brightside Broadcasting. We're here broadcasting. And we're just going to sing the national anthem real quick. Can you hear me, everyone? Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleam, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so I love you. I love you, Trump. Bye. Thank you for everything, President. Thank you. I want to thank every last one of you for tuning in. You guys are incredible. We are committed to being viewer funded. Viewer funded is the reason why we're able to bring you coverage the way that we have, the way that we don't, we're not politically correct. We're able to show you what's actually happening. We're able to tell the truth. And our goal is to supplant Fox News. You guys have seen what Fox News has done. If you want to support the future of independent media that's going to tell the truth and be America first and not be beholden to big corporations or investors, then continue to support us at Right Side Broadcasting. I want to thank every last one of you for tuning in, supporting us throughout this campaign. And we're hopeful for the right outcome. But just stay tuned and God bless you. God bless President Trump. God bless the United States of America.
since the Civil War. I mean, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of people have showed up today. This is the most patriotic spot in the United States of America right now. And the people here have come to deliver one message to President Trump. Do not quit. Is that right? support you all the way. Do not concede at all. Zero. This is going to the Supreme Court. We are not taking what the media says for our news at all. I'm a Christian, so I want Christians to get up off their knees, out of their prayer closet, and get busy. I'm making the statement that he, that we love him, and we're standing with him, and we have his back. We pull you in, and you're going to stay in, okay? And the Democrats are going to pay for everything. Okay, Biden? Go home, relax. We're going to put you in jail, okay? So just relax, okay? My message to President Trump is don't give up. Keep, keep the fight going. Don't give up. Do not concede. Fight this to the death if you have to. We're here supporting you. That's why we hope we held this uh, rally. That's why we're holding rallies across the, uh, across the nation and every capital. So keep going. Push forward. Don't give up because we're counting on you. It doesn't matter what color you are, black, white, Mexican. We are all for you, Trump. We will not concede. Neither should you. There are a lot of people who really, really uh, support him with our, our hearts. And uh, even a lot of Asians and Koreans are supporting as well. All Americans Trump has. Mexican American, mother of four, president. You, can, you are our president. We do trust you. We do believe in you. We see the change. We see the growth in our country. We see the stability. I do sleep better than four years ago. He's the most pro-life president we've ever had. He acts more Catholic than some of the Catholics that are supposed to be Catholic, such as Biden and Pelosi. These are the times that cry men's soul. We need warriors. We need warriors. We need American warriors to defend our freedom. I want to support my president. I love everything he's done for me and my family. Put money in our pocket, kept our country together and made a lot of black folks rich and, and well better, better off than four years or five years ago. We came up here to Washington, D.C. to show our president some support. He's been fighting for us since day one. He loves America. We love him. We just wanted to show him that we're still fighting for him and that he still has a silent majority out here. We want to stop the steal. We want to stand behind our president. We love Donald Trump. Do not concede under any circumstances. The law and the Constitution is on your side, and the people and the world need you. Let's go to it. Trump 2020. Stay strong. We're praying for you, and you'll come out the victor. And we will make America great again. Thank you, Michigan. Go out and vote. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're not conceding because we've won the election. 